Hello and welcome to another session of Making Events Easy with myself, Alison from Virtuality Admin Solutions. And today I'm with the lovely Gail, this is why I wonder where she is, the lovely Gail from Alexander, Eva, uh, who's also a virtual assistant, but uh, a very special virtual assistant because she's like a video, video guru virtual assistant, if we're allowed to call you that. <laughs> That's your new title for today. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about Obviously, the, the idea of these sessions is to talk about events and different things you can do to make running and organizing and marketing your event much easier. And last week, we took, talked to Ashley Watson all about marketing and making your marketing plan. So this week, it's all about videoing and the importance of taking videos and shots and all the things I don't know about that Gail does. So Gail, do you want maybe just to start off by telling us a little bit about your business and how you got started? Yeah, okay. So my name is Gail Alexander of Ava Alexander Virtual Assistant, and I have been a VA since 2016. And then shortly after, I niched, niched down into video, um, realizing that marketing was my and social media was my area of expertise. However, video was what I really impassioned me what how I really wanted to help business owners um sell their story do storytelling through the visual medium of video um so I do that part-time um at the moment because I have two young sons and hopefully they will not appear but this is live yeah so that's how I've been doing that for the last couple of years excellent and how many videos do you think you have taken at events or yourself personally? How many videos have you taken at events over the last, over those years? Okay, so personally for my social media and website, I can't count. There's loads. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm quite inherently lazy when it comes to that. I actually find it so much easier just to jump on live and say what I say instead of getting an image, typing it. Um, and it's the algorithm allows me to be shown to more of my clients and customers quicker because it's video so that way it works as well I've also got over the fact of oh it's this face going to be appearing and I have done so many lives in the car in the shopping center outside my kids school because it's more important to get that information out um and they do say sometimes done is better than perfect some cases that's true other cases it's not in terms of events, I've done quite a few. Um, probably the biggest one I did was the Northern Ireland Maternal Mental Health Conference. That was a couple of years ago, and there was a couple hundred um, attendees there, nurses, midwives, health um, uh, professionals. And so I was filming the event, the talks, the panels, and then also taking interviews from the attendees at the event, talking about why the event was extremely important, what they thought of the event and what well beforehand what they expected of the event and other events um have been lean in i'm also a member of lean in belfast so they have been larger events where we come together and talk about maybe what the teaching we've been doing and at the same time um panel sessions for that and again at the end test sort of testimonials and then lastly the most recent one would have been the manufacturing talent rules um, summit last year um, because obviously I haven't been able to do <laughs> much of uh, sort of event filming this year um, and that was for delegates from manufacturing industries from around Northern Ireland um, but we also had pre-recorded videos I had previously gone out to several companies and filmed the industry the, the business and what they did and spoke to many of the employees um, and the staff there to talk about what the industry was, what the role they did within the industry. And this was also to help supplement the social media. So it was for the event on the day, but it was also for the social media afterwards, where the whole purpose of this event was to encourage more people to consider a role within manufacturing. And so the purpose of my videos was to demonstrate there's so many different types of roles that it's not just maybe that traditional image of at a production line, but other roles like biochemistry, design, marketing, everything. So that was the purpose of that. So on the day, I would have taken different shots around the venue, the event, the people there, what went on, the workshops, 
and testimonials afterwards. So there's a whole different type of videos being taken there. Um, and yeah. And then they were all edited and repurposed and put on social media and the website afterwards. And, you know, as you say there, when you video an event like that, when you think of all the footage that you have from something like that and all the stills that you can take up, like you can make from that afterwards, that is an enormous amount of content, isn't it? It is very much so. And it's done with quite a few different cameras. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you'd be surprised about what ones that you can use. So... Again, you'll have more mobile cameras um, using your phone, um, selfie sticks, gimbals, as well as your more high quality DSLR cameras, video cameras and that kind of thing. So it's important to have like a stationary camera, maybe a separate camera set up in a more quiet part of the event where you can take those interviews for delegates there. Um, and that also depends on the rest of the kit you have, including, you know, your sound and your lighting, what you have available to you. And there's ways of doing that with very limited kit. And then there's ways of doing that with more advanced kit as well. Um, yeah. So on the day, quite often I would have a helper doing it um, and I would have maybe a, a list of shots that I want them to go and take. And I'll ask them to go and do some of the sort of slightly easier ones to do if I don't get a chance to do them, because they're quite fun actually to do, um, sort of more establishing locational shots. Yes, and would you advise, like what size of an event do you, uh, you know, how big does an event have to be to video it? Or do you think really that you could video any size of event? To be honest, you can, you can video any size of event. It really depends on what the event is. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that is going to be beneficial to be showing your wider audience, yeah, of course, go and video it. It doesn't matter whether it's small or large, you know, the purpose of videos are to attract, explain and retain as well as delight your customers. So any kind of content around that is useful and video, well, I'm slightly biased, is always going to be useful. But it does depend on the nature of the information that comes out of it. So some events may have more sensitive information or people talking that um, is confidential or they don't really want to be made wider known. So say when I'm doing some events for charities or like Lean In, what you can do is you can still film it. You just don't keep the sound. You would edit out so it's more locational shots again, but you're showing people what they do at the workshops. Um, but you don't hear any of the conversation. But again, something like that, you do actually have to ask permission yes, to yes. be able to use that footage. And so to make it very um, clear and specify at the start that any shots within a workshop like that, a private workshop where people are talking about very personal things potentially, um, that you're not going to share those details. So in yeah. reality, you can re film anything. It just depends on whether you have the kit the permissions to do so and what the nature of that event is and just be very mindful of that. And even if it's useful, because not all necessarily will be useful, but then that's yeah. what editing's for. Yes, exactly. Because I know I helped um, a couple of summers for the farmers markets in Hillsborough and the food fair in Moira. And, you know, they had the council had a, a, a professional, someone who came to take the video, but they had to ask permission. But I think the beauty with things like that is, it really helps show people for future events the atmosphere because you can't, you know, you can tweet and, you know, put as many messages as you want to about the event, but you can't get the atmosphere until you actually see a video of it and see yeah. people sitting in their hot dogs and playing games and all that. FOMO is very useful. Fear of missing out is a brilliant marketing tool. One of those marketing, marketing terminologies, but it's, it's really useful. So that would be one of the things that I would advise doing if you're able to do it is doing live videos, which I know a lot of people, you know, it's bad enough getting in front of a camera and recording yourself, but oh my God, doing it live, Ooh, scary monsters. <laughs> But it really, really works because it's like, hey, I'm here. This is what's going on. Look at all the people. Look at the fun. You can even still attract people to come down there and then. So it's like, come on down. The price is right is now playing in my head. Anyway, but live videos is really, really useful as well. And again, there's so many different tools, um, things to do all around live as well. Excellent. Well, we've just got a question. Suzanne is joining us live today. Hello, Suzanne. Um, <laughs> He asked the question, have you found that posting videos of previous events has got much interest, posting about your business story and atmosphere, for example? 
It can do, yes, but it also depends on how much you've marketed it beforehand. Um, so if you've had a really big push and tickets have sold out and there's been a wait list and even those have sold out, people will watch it because, oh my goodness, I couldn't attend it. I wasn't able to. I want to know what happened. So yes, does depend on how you edit it as well because it probably makes it a lot easier. You can cut out all the breaks where delegates or um, panelists are changing. So you can cut out a lot of the dead space and make it even quicker to watch. And it yeah. also is important to tell people that here's a shortened version of the event um, and wherever you actually post it, um, if you're able to timestamp it, so say at five minutes in, this is what happens, 25 minutes in, this is what happened. It also means people are more likely to watch it, watch more of it because they can skip to the parts that are relevant to them. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely it helps because obviously not everyone's gonna be able to attend your events for whatever reason, they can't get it or they, they don't even live in the same country. It depends yeah. on the topic and depends on how you present it afterwards and how much marketing beforehand and afterwards as well to make sure people know that it's available. But yes, it definitely works. Great, thank you. And hopefully, Suzanne, you can let us know if that answered your question. And you mentioned about um, like the list that you would give your, your video minion <laughs> to take when you're at the event. Shop like, list. Well, your shop list, your shop list. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like in your opinion what should those shots what if you could just give us a wee overview of what those shots yeah your video minion <laughs> i'm just laughing because all i can hear is bananas in my head now yes slightly crazy so yeah a shot list that i would give my somebody that comes and helps me to do would be the likes of those establishing shots mm -hmm. so showcasing where the event is so outside so with uh, manufacturing talent rules it was in the titanic exhibition so of course we had photographs stills and video of that then inside the event there was also um videos of how you got to the event because quite often when you go to events like where am i going yeah. so it was like literally walking into the elevator walking out of the elevator showing the the actual signposts of where the event's going to be and then showcasing round you know the set out of the table with the, where you sign up for your delegate sign up where you can pick up your badge uh, showcasing um the event schedule and then showing round the venue itself so you can show the set while nobody's there getting set up, then you can go and take different angles. So again, in the Titanic Center, we were able to go up a floor and take shots from down. So it's really interesting to get different angles and um, to make it slightly more interesting and then get them just to walk around as the delegates arrived. Delegates, I've obviously been watching too much of the US presidential elections and keep saying <laughs> delegates, <laughs> attendees. Um, um taking people as people come in and watching how they interact and showing that people are finding it useful enjoyable um and so those kind of inf um those establishing shots at the start um so you've got like establishing shots people shots and then while you're maybe filming the event the panel the speeches they are able if they've been trained they're able to go off and maybe take one of those attendees to ask them well why did they attend what did they hope to get and then afterwards what did they think of the event how was it useful or even their their points of view on the whole topic of of why they're there which is also very useful because it just re-establishes and reinforces the message of the whole reason the event is happening yes, yes. now i have been at events before where people have asked i've done like live video interviews at the end as well and i think it's great it's a great way to promote the future event and to really understand that real life people are there and getting real yeah. value from the content as well. It's very it's more authentic as well. It's rather than reading something, it's like, yeah, I really enjoyed learning about manufacturing. <laughs> but it was in fact actually incredibly interesting when I went there and also looking at, you know, through the different uh sort of I'm sorry, I'm slightly distracted because I can hear my kids kissing each other. <laughs> oh, it's good. But yeah, so like say it was the Dalriada Festival. I know they did a lot of videos that we were meant to go to. Um, and so people were saying how much they enjoyed it. And again, they would have had establishing shots of the the performers of the tents of all the stalls as well. And it sort of gives more of a feel of what to expect, how it looks and how much people enjoyed it. So yeah, those, those after ones are definitely really, really good. 
Another thing that I noticed a lot during lockdown, and actually I was talking to an American man one night who um, owns a lot of theatres in America, and he had the foresight, and thank goodness he did, about a year ago, he started filming all of his live productions. Yeah. And at the time, he didn't really know why he was doing it. He just thought, oh, this might be useful for the future. And then, of course, when lockdown happened and no one could go to the theatre, he was like, you know what? I've got all those videos and I'm going to stream them. And I didn't charge like mega bucks, but he charged a bit of money for people to view them. And, you know, he was able to save his business during lockdown because he had that material. And I think at the moment that is a massive thing for people to think about as well if they're delivering some kind of like I, I have a lot of clients who are delivering face to face events and courses that you have a lot of online material you know, as a backup or as a second part of your business that you're able to, you know, that you're able to offer that because it could save you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's like um, an avenue pretty much for most, if not all businesses to have a video of some kind. Yeah. So when you were talking about that example of the man in the United States, they did that here as well in the London West End. So Andrew Lloyd Webber had the show must go on and they live streamed uh, or a video of a show every Friday during lockdown which was available for everyone and free. But so businesses, when you talk about need to, you know, there are more one-to-one -one using, going to online and, and producing video content, they're maybe thinking, oh, how can I do this? Yeah. Well, there's so many different ways you can use video. It's like, so say you are um, a beauty salon, you can show different techniques and hacks of what you can do at home, as opposed to having to go to the salon. It might be more convoluted and it might be a bit time consuming, but you know, I can still do this, but I can go back to this time when it's opened again. Again, yeah. like um, a sewing instructor, they can obviously show instructional videos. So you can always have demos, educational pieces, comments, entertaining pieces, just to keep your business in the mind of the consumer out there. And there's even additional complimentary videos. So say you produce, um, you're a chef or a cook, that kind of thing. You can say, right, well, here's a recipe. You know, it's April. We have those, so many of these ingredients. Here's a couple of different examples of how you can use that. Or you're a chocolatier. Well, you know, you can still order from me online. Don't forget that. But here's a way you can use my produce in another way. You can make cocktails out of it. You can melt them and use them in this way. There's just so many different ways that video can be used. Again, it's for attracting and explaining, entertaining, and just keeping your presence and your visibility up there and with, with the customer. Yeah, because I, I saw really funny, and I know they do that quite a lot as well, and that you love them as well, the blippers. <laughs> but the people also show the blippers of them yeah. trying to make a video or something. And that's hilarious. Like the views you get with things like that are just yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Like, I mean, it's the same as watching cat videos on YouTube. Everyone yeah. wants to giggle. Everyone yeah. wants to make them smile. What do you go to social media for? Generally, either you're looking to be entertained or you're re researching something. So if you're looking to be entertained, put those blooper reels up. It shows more of your personality. And that's really what you're trying to get across with your customer anyway. You're trying to build a relationship with that person, that company, whoever. And they're more likely to deal with somebody that they, they know more about. They see the real person. Okay. Even if it's highly professional, it doesn't matter. People are more likely to deal with the people, the person, rather than the brand. Yes. And like we've had this discussion before as well, where both of us have posted videos about us doing crazy stuff. And, you know, it's the, those videos that people remember and, and go, oh, yeah. there you go, you're the girl that's always doing the thing with your kids and, you know, or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. they, they remember you. it's your personality that they remember and that they yeah. want to be with you. Yeah, and, and they're going to watch them because it's the same with Instagram um, and Facebook as well. When you look at the analytics, the ones that have a person in it or yourself, and I, I've seen this myself, get more interaction. When I post a picture of me or a video of me, especially with the, the boys, the mental ones, um, I'll get more interaction. People like to see that. So, And then it's also more about who I am, why I do what I do, and the kind of person I want to work with. They can see the type of person I am and, and see that there's a, a, a shared common ground that we can. there'll be an understanding and it'll be a lot easier to work with. So, yep, yeah, those mad, funny off the cuff videos are useful as well.
a yes. time and a place once once you make sure that they are put in the right location they are appropriate to, to that location and they're brand specific if it's to do with your business yes exactly and i know you you've put together a freebie guide all about the gear that you can use because i know you can talk about that for hours and hours, and hours <laughs> um, about yeah. all the different gear there is so i'll post a link yeah. to that um under our chat today as well um, and is there anything else that you'd like to bring up well we were talking actually about video testimonials there earlier on as well and can you just give an example of maybe where you can repurpose all of your your video testimonials and why people would do that at an event or even you know yeah so like 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 any testimonial you can post them on your website so where you see this quote on your website it doesn't have to be a quote you can put in that video of somebody saying those words that you were going to print out but also you can use those take those video testimonials and you can use them on your social media they can be content you can even create blogs around them so it's like somebody said i came to this event and i didn't realize that you could do this i learned this from the event and then run with that story it's like well they learned this well this is the other things that you can learn from going to these type of events like networking i didn't realize that you know it's so easy to do how you can do it how you approach people when you feel not confident there's techniques to do it so there's another blog coming out of that um of saying tools and techniques of how to break into conversation at a networking event when you feel really uh unconfident mm -hmm. um they can be used and put together with the sign taken off as just a video show reel as well and so like if you want it as a header on your facebook um page or even you can use them in your linkedin so again linkedin you're posting content that is useful to your client it gives value but it's also there for social proof to show your expertise and so you're able to post that it's like don't take my word for it listen to this person so again instead of having somebody write it why don't you get them to do a short video granted it's maybe not that easy to get them to do a video indirectly um when i say that i mean you're not there face-to-face -face video in them you're asking them to get their phone and do it themselves but there's ways of coaching people through that giving them examples but basically any video you can repurpose it you can put it on any platform you can add subtitles to it you can cut it you can splice it with other videos take the sound out you can even use make it as a gift if you want to like do DJ effects on it and if somebody yeah. says something, there's so many different things editing is a wonderful thing so that yeah. you can edit it um to be used on whatever platform as long as it doesn't take away the the message from that you're not editing the the content out of it because that's just unethical really so, um Suzanne actually had posted there thank you for your um editing for your editing skills as well Gail because mm -hmm. I know I think that's the thing and it's the thing also that kind of that I stumble a bit with that you even if you have a video and you think oh I don't like that bit and then you think to me oh am I, how am I ever going to edit this and like you've shown us all how to edit things and for more ago and all the rest so you know and even in Loom and I know a lot of the virtual assistants use Loom to make explainer videos for clients which is also another really useful thing to do yeah it's very easy to trim in Loom and you know download if you want to download and re-upload to YouTube or you know wherever you want and I suppose that's the beauty with the video once you have the video you can put it wherever you want yeah you can save it and you can take stills from it as well and do whatever you want with it but yeah you can edit it so don't worry about those bloopers happening they'll happen like um who didn't love the news journalist giving a, a live broadcast to the news program when his kids came running and yeah. I mean that guy is now famous so yeah all publicity is good publicity okay. but um you know don't worry that's what editing is about and with tools like Filmorgo, Contasia, Moave, or oh, Premiere Pro, Coral, uh, Loom, Wave and there's so many there some are easier than others like I've played with others that I've just gone no that's not for me yeah. and others I'm like you know this is so intuitive yeah. um you can pick, pick it up really easily or even they have their own explainer videos which you mentioned there you know that it, you can teach yourself to do it or big plug you can outsource them exactly. um, <laughs> you can outsource them but it's really you, it shouldn't stop you from taking video editing isn't that difficult it's when you get into 
you know, if you're talking about doing a proper documentary or a film, that's slightly different. You know, that's yeah. more nuanced with color grading and sound editing and overlays and CGI. Yes, that yeah. is not my area of expertise. That's Some of it, yes, they do. But it depends what you want, you know, for it's your business and explainer. It's easy enough to add graphics, logos, watermarks, text, in video, you know, picture in picture videos, and even importing other stock because there's so many stock libraries of images, video, and music as well. That can be imported as well. And a lot of it is free. You know, so many of those tools that I've mentioned are free. Some of them are a one off fee and it's still quite small. And then because they have tiers, you know, yeah. up to the premier levels as well. So it just depends what you want and what you need. You can do it yourself. Or as I say, you can outsource it to somebody else, like a graphic designer or, you know, full on video studio, whatever yeah. your budget is. But don't let that stop me doing it there's so many tools out there that um i have a massive list which will be another freebie when i compile it all there's so much there and as <laughs> else, i can talk forever on that so i will <laughs> I don't remember that one. but for anybody listening today actually you'd be very glad to hear that gail is putting together a course um all about video and all the things she's mentioned today and that will be ready um october yeah. time October time October. to be revealed. Um, so I shall share the link to her page up under this video as well. So you can you can check that out near the time as well. And just and finally, what are your favorite types of videos that you actually like to watch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't I know. I sort of impression that you spend a lot of your day watching videos. <laughs> I do, I do now. It's sad. I don't have a life. I'm either working or running after mental kids. They're not mental, I keep saying that, that's awful. They're just really, really active. Um <laughs> So I actually spend a lot of my time watching videos and that's probably where it's helped me grow my love of it. I watch a lot of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so my sort of three favorite is um, more lifestyle ones. So it's tiny homes. Okay. <laughs> this is obviously a dream of mine when everything's done, dusted and made my millions. Uh, <laughs> to travel about, there's van lifers. So converting vans and traveling about, because I have to say I'm an ex-geography student, geography geek, I love to travel. Oh. So I'm living vicariously through their videos of seeing all around the world. Of, I want to go there and I want to go there. And Boat Lifers. So there's a two two different video streams where I watch uh, a mono hull and a catamaran where they're traveling around the world. And again, these are another types of videos that you can do. Um, and people support these videos through Patreon. So again, you know, you can make your video. So a lifestyle, say you're a jam maker. or There was another one, a bourbon, a, a bourbon maker, my life before bourbon and so he, people support their creative efforts and uh, sponsor them through patreon and again like some children's presenters did that through the summer um maddie moats and greg foot who do children's programs and cbbc they did their own tv program from their spare room yeah. with a lot of tech granted but when i i actually asked them and they answered me back they told me and it wasn't that difficult so if you're more used to doing videos this wouldn't have been too difficult to do but it really was incredibly useful and it was so engaged parents really appreciated it and that has definitely helped their career being yeah. more visible putting that content out there and again the other example of course would be joe wicks um yeah. his pe with joe which i did not that you would know to look at me because i ate everything as well as doing that during lockdown i did it the kids just watched me but from that he secured um a million pound book deal he had book deals before but oh, wow. he, so it just shows you the power of video it's getting yourself out there more visible and it's quite easy really to do yeah because i noticed it was very funny on sunday night i think it was about eight o'clock or a bit later um daniel o'donnell's facebook live yeah. <laughs> and I went on, and oh my goodness, it was 7.2 million people were yep. watching, were engaged with that all around the world. And mm -hmm. it was funny because I had seen some that him and Magella had done at the start, and it was them outside the house. And, and now he got to the stage, you know, obviously someone was in the house to help him, but he had um, all the sound equipment and everything, so he was singing away. But, you know, he started that as well, just him and Magella talking, you know, yep. and, and he kept doing it. And he kept doing it and his followers all kept following him. I'm not saying I'm a big <laughs> massive Daniel Donald fan, but I'm just saying fair play to the man because he kept his career like top of the game there yeah. the whole way during lockdown where other people would have been, what am I going to do? I can't go out to do gigs. 
he kept visible and there's quite a few celebrities did that they produced their own uh john krasinski emily blunt's husband some good news which was brilliant and instead of all the bad news we were hearing was asking for people to send him items of good news and so he showed that and through that they had proms for kids he dj'd he um had them all come on live he had uh actors come on live and tell the, what the weather was okay and all they did was yeah it's good but it shows the power of video people watch this people engage with this and then there's so many of these examples of, of just celebrities keeping their star shining basically and it's worked really well for them and one thing to say with that is you know keep going keep going keep going you're not talking to a void it may feel like it but it's not people will go back and watch because again that's the beauty of the video it's stored there and people can come back and view it and that's what i've done with some of those youtube channels that i've been watching i've gone back and it's been great i've been able to binge watch because i can't get to the tv because the kids are hopping so <laughs> <laughs> but i've noticed that even because we're both um, VA, the founders of the VA Heroes as well. And on a Monday and a Friday now, myself and Gail either day um, do a Facebook Live. And I've noticed as well that over the weeks, the engagement is going up as well because people are getting used to the time and that we're on and, you know, that we're, we're hopefully telling something useful. <laughs> okay. But one thing is it, you, um, the audience will get a notification that you're going yeah. live. Yeah. So that also helps as you know if you put a post up not everyone's going to see that they'll maybe see on a whole list of other notifications but your video live will come up it'll post up and say gail allison's going live so they'll go and watch that yeah so the video is definitely definitely useful as long as you have and i probably should have said this earlier like you know you're decent it doesn't even have to be decent but camera but always pay attention to your lights and sound because if your sign's woeful nobody's going to watch it lights important but not quite as much but sound is incredibly important and again in the gear guide there's examples of all the different levels of of microphones that i use um and what's really easy to get if you don't even have them um and just tips and tricks to you know i don't have a lighting setup well, what way can i do it so Again, so, there's, that will be my next freebie. Once I manage to get it finished on, is basically the five basics. Five basics. And the reason why I say this is because my website is in transition. And so this is why I'm, uh, we're getting there. But the five basics of video, once you get these right, well then, you know, all you can do is grow from there. Just don't be yes. afraid to try. Exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And uh, this will be, uh, obviously it is live today on the Facebook page, but you can find it under the videos if you're not watching live. And next month, I'll be joined by Chris uh, from Brand Enable, who is a live streaming expert and has turned that, you know, really pivoted towards that for his side of the business. And he helps to live stream big events, which is very important now when people, you know, can't do live big events um, face to face. So it's very important. Do we have a little guest? Do we have a guest video appearance there nearly? <laughs> we heard a little, a little <laughs> wannabe in the background. That's the husband, that's not even the kids. <laughs> he's jealous because you're always making all these videos. No, it's not that. It's because I he's upstairs at my desk and I'm downstairs at the kitchen table. This is where the, the kettle is. So it's live. That's what people love it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And we'll post up the your 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 first of your freebies um under this post as well today. So thank you so much. No worries. Thanks very much for having me. And I look okay. forward to seeing it. Great, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Please stay.